şimdi sırada DHL Express global satış programlarından sorumlu başkan yardımcısı Landert Van Delft var. I'd like to invite Mr. Van Van Delft to the stage, please. Landert Van Delft, who has been doing DHL since 2007, is still as a DHL certified international specialist. He is passionate about creating a strong, result-focused and customer-centric culture and passionate about anything which has to do with interacting with customers and colleagues of all socioeconomic backgrounds. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Maraba. It's my honor to speak for you all. I feel humble to speak for you all because if you look how full the room is, I think over 1,000 people, people standing in the back even, I see huge potential here in the room. And this morning, actually, somebody asked me the question. They, said, they asked me, okay, if you look at Turkey and if you compare Turkey to other e-commerce markets in the world, where do you see Turkey? Where is it? Is it down here? Is it up here? Where do you see it? And I actually quoted one of the gentlemen this morning who named Turkey as a shining star. But I think shining star is actually an understatement. Because if, uh, uh, if I look at the world and if I look where Turkey is now and if I look how DHL Turkey is progressing, I would not only call Turkey a shining star, but based on the Turkish entrepreneurship, based on your geographical location in the world, based on the great products you have in here. This morning, I was approached by multiple companies who really have brilliant products. I will not only call Turkey a shining star, but also really a rising star. And I think in the next 12 to 16 months, cross-border e-commerce is really going to take off very hard in uh, Turkey. That's something I really, truly believe in. And of course, at conferences like this, we are here, companies like Media Nova, like MasterCard, to really to help you grow, to help you increase your sales, to help you increase cross-border. And of course, you are also here to learn. So before we learn a bit more, I actually want to test your knowledge about e-commerce. So we're going to do a little quiz. I have just three questions, just to test your knowledge about e-commerce today. Yeah? Okay. So, a few weeks ago it was Black Friday. One of the biggest e-commerce events in the world. It's actually Singles Day is the biggest one, but Black Friday is the second biggest one. So, the question is complete the sentence. 12% of all Black Friday shoppers are male, 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 anything else? Kids? Teenagers, they're drunk. <laughs> this was formal research. I didn't make this up. It was a survey by Rita Minat. 12% of all Black Friday shoppers admitted they were under the influence of alcohol while hitting the online stores. Second question, also about Black Friday. 31% of millennials have made an online purchase from. And it's again, complete the sentence. Sorry? Social media? Cross-border? From the bathroom. <laughs> but this is actually true. In today's world, people are shopping everywhere. And people are shopping all the time. I was last, not last weekend, the week before, I was at an e-commerce event in Athens. And at the end of the event, I asked, okay, guys, please be honest. Can everybody please raise their hand who has been online shopping during my speech? And three hands went up. There, also, somebody's online shopping right now. Keep doing it. Make sure it's shipped via DHL and it's delivered perfectly. So <laughs> keep shopping. Um, but that, that, uh, that is happening today. So the last question, and if you paid attention to the presentation of Mr. Klaus, you must, you must have known the answer. So what's the size of the cross-border e-commerce market by 2020? One, one trillion, completely correct, paid very good attention. So indeed, one trillion, 
And as Klaus mentioned this morning, that market is growing with twice the size as the domestic market. And if you look at some emerging markets, they are growing 25% year on year on year. So imagine you're selling to one of those markets. Your sale will grow with 25% year on year on year. But for me, the most interesting fact or the interesting quote on this slide is actually how consumer behavior is changing. Because if you look in today's world, even more than just product and pricing, it's actually shipping and delivery where you as a merchant can really distinguish yourself over the competition. Because in today's world where you can order a taxi within seconds, you can streamline a video within you know, real time actually, I can order a pizza within 45 seconds, consumers, they want their product yesterday. And the days where as a consumer, at least me, I was willing to pick up the phone, make an order, and then wait three weeks or four weeks for my, for my products to be delivered, those days are long gone. If I order something online, and I order quite a lot online, if it's delivered after three weeks, I forgot that I even ordered it. I, to I totally forgot about it. It's delivered like, what's this? And I open it like, oh yeah, yeah, forgot about it. But that is the consumer behavior that's, which is changing. And, oh, let me go back one. And this is not just me saying this. If you look at all the research out there, and there's a lot of e e research about consumer behavior, cross-border e-commerce, etc. Those shipping and delivery options are really playing a crucial role in a brand success. And as you can see here, 91% of consumers, they're actually looking for the available shipping and delivery options before reaching the checkout. Or 68% of millennials, they choose a re retailer over another purely based by the delivery options which are being offered. So they will go online, start shopping, they will look for the shipping and delivery options. If it's not according to their wishes, they will go to another brand and look there. Oh yes, uh, this company can deliver to my wishes, so I will spend my money here. So that is what today's consumer is looking for. Or 46% of basket development is caused by those limited shipping and delivery options. And that is something you really have to be conscious about. Because perhaps your website looks like this beautiful pictures, nice and shiny, everything is there, your brand logo is there. But if you don't position clearly those shipping and delivery options, and if you don't use shipping and delivery options as part of your commercial strategy, you think your user experience on your website is like this. But it's actually this. And in order to support you with that, what we have come up with is something very simple called the website health check. Funny thing also always happened, I will walk out of the screen because when this slide comes on, I see 100 cameras going up. So I wanna take a picture of the cameras. I will talk through a few of them. This is a very simple checklist you can use in order to check how open your website is for cross-border sales. So the first point is, do you sell internationally? And I, I, I don't think that is something I have to convince you about. Today's market is global. And in a recent speech, it was not a speech, it was a, it was a panel actually, uh, by the World Trade Organization, uh, Jack Ma said this. He said that within the next 30 years, 80% of the business will be global, 80% of the business will be e-commerce, and it will actually be those small and medium businesses who can benefit from it. And why is that? It's, he was not saying, and I'm also not believing, that those big e-commerce giants, the Amazons of this world, the Ebays of this world will disappear. No, definitely not. But it's actually the small and medium businesses who really have the opportunity to tap into this potential because they are flexible, they can adjust very quickly, etc. And also, what I mentioned here, Today's world trade, a lot of that is seen in shipping containers. Going forward, and that's a, a shift we already see now happening, that will move to smaller parcels. Orders will become smaller because it will, be, it will be only become more and more easy to buy something online. And what I always say is, as a company, you can be a global company tomorrow. Back in the days, that was impossible. Because if you wanted to be a global company, you had to have pockets full of money, 
travel to another country, open up your shop, invest money, put your sign outside, sit in the shop, wait for the customers to come. Okay, that was successful. Then again, take some more money, go to the second country, open up your shop, open the windows. Yes, here I am. Today, you can be a global company tomorrow, tomorrow thanks to e-commerce. And how we as DHL built our network was actually that old way. Sending somebody to a country with some money, say, okay, now you open up your, our operations in Kuwait or you open up our, our operations in Papua New Guinea. So we have done that all for you. And you can leverage on the network. And you saw the slide this morning with the 220 countries. That's something you can use. And via that, you can be a global business tomorrow. Second point on the website health check. Do you state your shipping and delivery options clearly on your homepage? This is, for me, from the website health check, the most powerful advice. We have seen increases, uh, increases in conversion rates of 40 to 60% purely by a company clearly stating their shipping and delivery options on their homepage. And in a lot of cases, that information is still either hidden in the footer of a website, or you need to go through the whole checkout process to finally see, okay, what are the shipping and delivery options? See now a lot of people nodding yet in, yes in the audience. Well, we saw that 91% of consumers who are looking for that information before they reach the checkout. And I always like to explain it with this little example. So imagine it is Halloween. And you buy at Halloween, you buy the best candy in the world. You hide it all in your house. You close the curtains, you sit inside, and you wait for the kids at Halloween to knock on your door, sing you a song, so that you can give them the candy. So it's just sort of doing business, actually. If at Halloween you don't put it little, this little pumpkin in front of your door, nobody will knock on your door. And all the kids will go to that house, not to that house, even if, even if, even if the best candy in the world is in there. But that's the same with doing business cross-border online. You need to be saying very clearly that you're open to international sales, that you're open to cross-border shipping, and that you are happy to take their money and give them your candy. That's something to really think about. So do you offer an express delivery option? And our advice is always offer multiple delivery options. Later on, I have a nice example how we help the customer to grow. But if we look at the trend today, you see how the trend is really even shifting further. So I mentioned the example uh, at the beginning where some, somebody is not willing to wait anymore 33 weeks or four weeks for a shipment to be delivered. That time span is only getting shorter. And an example, 47% of consumers, they actually don't consider two-day shipping as fast anymore. They want next-day shipping. And where, let's say, a year ago, 12 to 16 months ago, it was all about free shipping. You have to order free shipping. Free shipping, all the consumers are looking for free shipping. That trend is shifting, and customers want fast shipping. And customers are willing to actually pay a premium for that. Because there is no such thing as free shipping. Free shipping doesn't exist. Because in the end, you do need to pay the invoice of DHL or another logistics carrier, they, uh, they, 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 they need to get paid as well. So free shipping doesn't exist. But what you can think about is, okay, how do you position those charges on your website? And are your charges appropriate? Because if you ask 60 euro for next day shipping, I can promise you nobody will select it. However, you can get smart with that. And I want to explain it with this little example. So this morning I landed in Turkey, I landed in Istanbul, I stepped outside of the airport, and it was freezing cold and it was raining. So I need a winter jacket. So in my hotel room, I go shopping online. And I'm also in Istanbul tomorrow. So I go shopping online and I find the perfect winter jacket, 170 euros. So, okay, I think, yeah, I, I need a jacket, I'm cold, it's raining, and I need it tomorrow. I go to the checkout, I can see I can have an express delivery, in my hotel even, for 20 euro extra. But then I start, then I start to think, like, okay, I pay 170 euro for a jacket, 
am I willing to pay 20 euro for shipping? That's quite a lot. So this can result in the fact that I will cancel my order and start to look somewhere else if I can find it cheaper or better or whatsoever. But now go back where I started to search online for my winter jacket and I find exactly that same winter jacket for the first time for 185 euros. If I was willing to pay 170 euros for a winter jacket, I'm most likely also willing to pay 185 euros for a winter jacket. If I then go to the checkout and I can see I can have that express delivery for only 5 euros, it will feel like a bargain. Of course I will click buy now. Only 5 euros for next day shipping. Yes, of course, I will, of course I will choose it. This is what the big brands are doing. And of course this example doesn't work for every product. But it's all about getting smart with your shipping charges. So other things you can do, an example, is think about flat rate shipping. One fixed rate for all the shipments to the US or one fixed rate for all the shipments to the Middle East, an example. Because consumers, they want clarity. They want something simple and they want to understand it. Or think about offering free shipping, but again, there is no such thing as free shipping, but then offer it above a specific threshold. Say, okay, for orders over 150 euros or for orders over 200 euros, you get free shipping. Customers want to reach that threshold because customers, yes, they like free shipping. So a lot of research has shown how the average spend on a website really increases once something like this is put in place. Or, and that's a more recent trend, are those subscription services. Think about what Amazon is doing with their Amazon Prime. It's brilliant. It's really brilliant. Do you have somebody from Amazon in the room? Yeah, there, okay. You have the most ugly website in the world. I mean that. Amazon is a very ugly website, but it is a conversion rocket. And it has the ideal customer experience. If I, go, if I go shopping on Amazon, I know exactly what I'm buying, what I'm spending, when I, when I will have it delivered, how fast I will have it delivered, how much I have to pay, everything is there. If I compare Amazon's website to a very fancy luxury brand, yeah, perhaps that other website looks more beautiful, has more shiny pictures. But as a consumer, Amazon is doing a very smart job. And what Amazon is doing with their Amazon Prime, it's not something which they can only do. But we see that as something which more companies are now doing. Where they offer a subscription service where you pay a monthly fee or an annual fee or you pay a fixed amount up front where then you get free shipping for the rest of the year or 50% off your express shipping for the whole year. So those are things you can all think about. Last point are delivery notification mentioned on your website. And this is all about continuously keeping the customer updated about where their shipment is and what they can do with the delivery. Because the customer experience doesn't stop the moment the customer clicks buy now. What I believe in is that actually that's the moment when the customer experience really starts. If you screw up that last mile, you can ruin that whole online customer experience. If the shipments are not delivered in a proper way, customers will not come back to your shop again because they will blame you for that. And one of the things which we are offering for that is a tool called on-demand delivery. Why in, via which in 100, 160 plus countries, that whole communication part, after the customer has clicked buy now, is taken care of in local languages with, with, with different delivery options so that the consumer really can take full control of the shipment. Because if I buy something today and it's planned to be delivered on Friday, I really don't know where I am on Friday. So I want to have the flexibility to take control of that. And as you can see here, 30% of the consumers who were already shopping, they actually did it. But 48% said, yeah, actually, if I had the option, I would have used it. So make sure you offer a solution like that, because if you don't have it, you can disappoint 30% of your customers. And once everything has gone well, and you have done everything right, those customers will come back for more. If that delivery experience is successful, customers will come back to your store, and customers are willing to spend more money. I had a, re a meeting with eBay recently where eBay, eBay actually make this statement, the formal statement, e-commerce is 80% logistics. 
That is how important that logistics element is in e-commerce. And to close off with one example how we've helped the customer, this is Ben. This is Ben five years ago. Ben Francis. Five years ago, a bit, bit more now, six years ago approximately, he had a nice idea to start an online shop. And he was selling gym t-shirts. And it went well. And this is actually Ben in one of his first months where in the morning he was actually nervous if any orders were coming in. So he was opening his email very excited, like, oh, do I have a new order? Yes, I have five, five orders today. He was very happy. And this is him with his product driving to the postal station to give their shipments and to ship to the customers. This is Ben's warehouse last Black, last Black Friday, where he shipped out 70,000 orders on one day. One Black Friday, 70,000 orders. How could he do this? He took his business global. And when we start working with Ben, he was focusing on the UK, in his, that was his domestic market. And at a point, he was getting really successful in that. He was selling in the UK, he was making good money, etc. At one point, one of our DHL colleagues was driving by. And he saw there this guy in his house, in his garage, very busy with boxes. And there was a very brand new Porsche standing next to it. So he thought, okay, that's interesting. So he drove there and he started to talk. He said, well, what are you doing here? And there were three guys there. He said, yes, my name is Ben, Ben Francis, and I'm the founder of Gymshark. They had a conversation. And the DHL sales rep, Martin, he said, okay, but why don't you take this brand cross-border? And why don't you take this brand global? It's beautiful. You have beautiful products, you're successful in the UK. But at that time, they said, no, sorry, we're already grown too hard. We're growing 25% year on year. So we are very happy, guys. Look, we just brought a brand new Porsche. So we're happy, nothing to do. It took a year of discussion and a year of convincing until Ben said, OK, let's take my business cross-border. Let's add that express option and let's see what happens. Last Black Friday, those 70,000 orders were going to 180 different countries. From Nigeria to Kenya to Hong Kong to the US. Right now, he's competing in the US with brands like Under Armour, Nike, etc. And he started a bit over five years ago in his living room, shipping boxes. What he also saw is that Although his product value isn't that high, 50% of the customers are willing to, pay for that express, uh, willing to pay for that express option and choose that express option. I had a meeting with ASOS recently because sometimes, sometimes customers tell me, yeah, but for me, express is not interesting because my product is it's, yeah, it's not so expensive. It's not a, a dress of 1,000 euros, so my customers will not pick express. ASOS, the fashion brand or the fashion shop, one of their most popular products is the little black dress from their own brand, which is selling for 20 pounds. 60% of the ladies who are buying that dress are paying an additional 13 pounds to have that express delivery. So they pay 20 euros on a dress and 13 for shipping because they want the products fast. And that is something Benzo also saw happening. Ben was bragging about his 25% growth. The moment he took his business global, it's 210% growth. And of course, that's a percentage. If I make 10 euros in revenue and I grow 210%, yeah, for me, that's not as impressive. But if you realize that last year, his revenue was 21 million, and this year, he's still growing with 210%, and the forecast for this year is over 47 million, then you are a fast-growing customer. That's actually why Gymshark is now the number one fastest growing sales brand in the UK. And why? Because he understands logistics and he took his business global. So my three points I would like to give to you. First of all, oh, go back one. Globalization is here to stay. Globalization is not a trend of this winter and will be gone tomorrow. No, globalization is here to stay. So really think about scaling your business cross-border. And in line with Klaus's speech this morning, it's not just about start selling to the UK, Germany, US, and Australia. There are a lot more countries there, and there are a lot more customers there. So take your business really on the global stage. 
So secondly, think about some quick fixes you can do on your website, on your web shop, and really to make your website open for cross-border. And as a last point, be very aware of what today's consumer is really looking for. Again, more than just product and pricing, it's really those shipping and delivery options where you can distinguish yourself over the competition and really power up your potential. So thank you. <laughs>